So a few weeks ago I was out and I carved a wooden spoon using nothing more than my belt knife. And I had mentioned at that time that was only one of a few ways you could make impromptu or expedient spoons if you, for whatever reason, forget the one you normally bring with you. Another way, and this was mentioned by a number of my viewers as well, is what we call the burn bowl. This is where you take a small coal, hot coal, low to your fire, and lay it on top of a split of wood and blow on it as slowly the coal will work its way into that piece of wood, creating a concave. You can then carve that concave out, remove most of the ash, and you have the bowl of a spoon. If you're interested in seeing how I do it, stay tuned. Okay, hopefully you can hear me over the wind. It's quite a windy day here in Halifax. And uh, I had to relight my little fire in my, in, down in the fire pit here. I'm using a little hobo stove and I'm creating some coals as we wait though. I thought I'd show you the tools that I need. Basically what I need is a stick. Now I just, this is a split of maple and it's quite old, quite dry, but I like the fact that it has a little bit of a curve to it along here. And this is where I'm going to burn the bowl in, is right in this area. I may just do some preliminary carving while I'm waiting for the coals to to uh, get ready. And what I need besides that is a, probably another stick to hold the coal down on top of this piece of wood and some, some type of tongs that I can manage the coals with. And this is made from a small green stick and just tied together, split right down the middle, tied together on the end with a jam knot and just a little uh, split uh, stick in the middle to spread it apart. And this will give me something I can use as an impromptu or expedient set of tongs that I can use for grabbing the coals with out of the fire. So I'm just going to do a little preliminary work while my coals are getting ready here and I'll bring it back when we we'll start the burning process. Alright, so we have a coal from the fire on top of my bowl and I'll use another little stick to hold it down on the bowl and I'm going to use my bellows to help with the burn. So that's basically the process. Now I'm going to continue to do this until I get a good sized bowl. So I'm going to stop for a few seconds or at least turn the video on for, off for a few seconds and I'll work at this and when I get closer to a good bowl shape with the hot coal and then I'll bring it back. So as with my last uh, spoon, one of the things you want to make sure of is that you don't go too deep. You don't need to go too deep to make a reasonable bowl. So with all that blowing, I have a bowl of a good size now still a little hot. I'm still working on it. There's still some live coal in the bottom of the bowl here. But at this point I'm just going to let those embers die off. And then I have a stone that I picked up down by the shore. A nice rough granite type stone that is rounded along its edge. This is going to be perfect for grinding out the bowl. But while I'm waiting for that to happen I can shape the spoon up a little bit. As you can see it's probably still quite a bit thick in the bowl itself. And that can be taken down quite a long way. So I'm going to take that down a little bit thinner and uh, make it look more like a spoon and then I'll grind out the the uh, embers or the ashes there and the, and the charcoal and we'll see what we have. So give me a few minutes. So after some carving, some burning and then using that stone that I had to rub out the bowl, this is what I ended up with. Again it's no prize winner. It's not going to win uh, any prizes for the most beautifully carved spoon but it's an extremely functional spoon. It's got a good bowl depth. It's got a good bowl thickness. I could take a little bit more off of this area right here to thin it out, but it's not necessary for functional. That will fit in my mouth just perfectly. And I was fortunate enough to get a bit of a curve or crank, like we like to say in spoon carving in the bowl. So, poor deer flies are out again today. So I suppose the question, if you've never used one of these before is, don't I worry about putting all that uh, charred wood in my mouth after I'm finished carving it? And the answer is no, I'm not. 
that's as clean as possibly can be. Uh, I'm down, I'm not even getting any more off on my fingers. That's just colored wood now. It's just browned wood. It's, the char has all been removed by that stone. And uh, I've done pretty good at getting it all out. There are no splinters that I'd have to worry about. So no, I, I don't worry about that at all. It, uh, you know, it likely will absorb some tastes over time. But this was meant to be an expedient spoon. It wasn't meant to be something I'd use multiple, multiple times. I will tell you this. I decided to work with dried maple today because I knew with the hot ember that it would go through a piece of pine or a other piece of softwood extremely fast. And it worked very well. The ember on this piece of maple worked very well. The problem was when it came to carving the wood. The wood is old and dried and now it's fire hardened by the coal so the wood is very very hard. That's why I tried to get a good portion of the carving done before I put the coal on the wood. And it was helpful. Even so I still had to do some more carving after I was finished burning the bowl and uh, and scraping it out with the stone. But so I got a spoon. A very functional spoon. Actually I'm probably going to keep this one just an example of something that I made that is functional and I didn't use a spoon knife to make with. So that's two different ways to make a spoon, and I have yet another way that I'm going to demonstrate in a future video. So if you're interested in seeing what that third method is, better subscribe to my channel. But in the meantime, get out and explore. Try that. The hot ember from a fire, it helps to have that little uh, pocket bellows to blow on it. But if you don't, you can still do it without. But try that sometime. As I said, get out and explore. Take the path less traveled. It will make all the difference. Bye for now.